the irony is and i'm just this is where the video starts i have no idea what we're gonna talk about <laughs> so is there anything you personally uh... want to like any qualms i well i know the first one you have is with the game but any other qualms <laughs> I mean, my qualms with the game aren't nearly as big as everyone else's. Like, yes, the graphics uh, could definitely be better, uh, but uh, I'm of the personal opinion that uh, the graphics are only one part of the game. Yes, I freak out all the time over the graphics in the new Pokemon games that are coming out about how pretty it looks and all the details and everything. And then you get miraculous and people are like, oh, this looks like it was built for the GameCube. <laughs> I have a GameCube. I grew up on the GameCube. This is better than GameCube. Trust me, <laughs> this is better than GameCube. I will get my GameCube out right now and play you the Bratz Rock Angels game and you can see what GameCube graphics look like. <laughs> no, no, but like for, for us, the uninitiated, when you look at the graphics and you're like, but we're in 2020, what the fuck is happening? I can understand people who don't remember how bad those graphics look like they can be like wait what does this look like because i remember watching a video a while back somebody was talking about super mario n64 or something and i saw that i was like wow we've come a long way <laughs> oh yeah like i've got that game for my switch and uh <laughs> uh yeah it's it is bad <laughs> like even the controls are bad so like my two things uh, that I really care about are, are is the gameplay fun, uh -huh. uh, and also uh, is the story good. That's my main thing. Yeah, is story. is the story good? Yeah, story is the biggest thing. But I also feel like a lot of the pictures, and this is me actually defending Miraculous for once. I feel like a lot of the pictures are maybe taken out of context, or maybe are kind of like leaks of development process because later pictures that we've been getting from the game and i'll try and find them and put them up they don't look half bad they look pretty decent i saw a picture recently of how of ladybug's uh costume in the game i guess they're gonna i i haven't but i've been trying to avoid too many spoilers yes i do trailer reviews and stuff on my channel but i've also been trying to do avoid too many spoilers uh just for the fact that you know i want to enjoy the game as much as possible uh and and enjoy the stuff when i encounter it uh, but uh, I did see an image uh, that was posted of Ladybug's new outfit. And it's definitely different than anything she's had in the show. Hopefully Cat Noir gets one. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet. But again, I haven't really been on Twitter much lately. A big part of that is because Good. leaks have been coming out for the show <laughs> that I've been trying to avoid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that and that image looked really clean and nice. And that, um, that was nice. Um, okay, so Again, you don't, you don't uh, let's get that uh, Cat Noir one. I, you don't want spoilers, so I won't give you one, but I, I actually have confirmation of, let's say, how do I say this without ruining it? Let's say a Cat Noir inspired suit. Let's say that. You're not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually thinking about putting my Kitty Noir costume that I uh, built uh, on my V-Roid model. Not the one that's based off of Cat Noir, but the one from the uh, Atria Twins a oh, series that I've been doing be on my cute. channel. That would be cute. Oh, speaking of that, y'all should subscribe. That's not a request, that's a threat. <laughs> okay. But r literally speaking, <laughs> I feel like the game... Um, I, I got a comment just this morning where somebody said that it's been... There's only a week left until launch day and there's no gameplay um, anything. So they were like, this, get, this game is dead on arrival. And I was like, huh, that's actually really weird. We haven't seen gameplay of the game yet. Now that is my biggest qualm is that they haven't really been advertising the game that much. Uh, Cause like we got the trailer just a month before the game's release. And it took so long to get digital uh, purchase or to get uh, digital pre-orders uh, out. And when it was uh, finally available for digital pre-order, at least on the Switch, it's on sale. I pre-ordered it at $40 and the game's supposed to be 50. Oof. Wow. And the fact that they're barely advertising the game uh, is like, it, it's like, it's almost like they're trying to sabotage it because most games like, let's look at Sword of, or let's, I keep Sword and Shield. Let's look at Scarlet and Violet, for example, the new Pokemon games. We first heard about those back in November 
or not November, back in February. Oh yeah, the when uh, during the anniversary. Yeah, and they're coming out in November. They're coming out after Miraculous, but we heard about them almost a year beforehand. I feel, and but, nobody take offense to this, but I feel like this game is a tax write-off. <laughs> uh, at this point, it wouldn't surprise me. Like, I will say this. I do understand the complaint about how this is supposed to be a high-budget game, mm -hmm. and it looks like something that was early WiiWare. I'm saying WiiWare, not GameCube, because I know what GameCube <laughs> games look like, and it's not this. <laughs> Uh, but I like I do understand that like it's supposed to be a high budget game and Miraculous is one of the highest grossing uh, kids franchises. Uh, it's obviously not as big as Pokemon, so uh, people who are saying it's oh it's the highest series, highest money making series in the world, it's like no that's Pokemon. Wait a minute, are you trying to tell me that Miraculous earns that much money? <laughs> uh yeah, I don't even see that many people talking about Miraculous. Like, I see, I've been seeing more people talking about it lately, just uh, not as many as I see Pokemon. No, like, Pokemon is a global franchise. I won't even say to touch it. But in terms of shows, I know Miraculous is a pretty big show, but... And it's and the one thing it has going for it is that it's so global. Like they do so much dubs in so many different languages, and they do their best to release it in several different countries. But it can't be that big, can it? <laughs> well, let me let me, let me mean... put all biases aside. It's it, the game just feels like maybe they had the idea to have the game maybe in season one and season two, and they didn't. The, the, it was left on the idea table for too long and then graphics have jumped because this show has been going on for I think five years now <laughs> I think <laughs> so by the time they were ready to get back to the game a whole new generation of consoles were available so that's why I feel like the graphics might be lagging behind but I want to have faith just just a minuscule of faith that this that the, that the game will surprise us and really shine but it feels like everybody even the people promoting this damn thing have given up on the game because where is the promotion where i mean to be fair we did have persona 5 long before we got miraculous and persona 5 looks amazing I uh, take but your word yeah for it. totally but also i think i know <laughs> I, i've heard this Thing going around that Persona 5 fans are crazy, so I'll also cautiously take your word for it. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big part of the fandom for that series. I kind of see uh, Persona games as Pokemon games for adults. Ooh. And in fact, I'll, I'll actually make a joke about how Persona 4 is My Little Pony Friendship is Magic for adults. <laughs> I, I, I've always heard of Persona, but I never knew what the game was about until recently where it was like, oh, it's that kind of like a murder mystery where you have to guess who the murderer is, but you grow attachments to people. And if you don't guess correctly, you lose people. So that Persona 4, uh, each Persona game has its own different storyline. I honestly never played one and two, but they're not as popular or big as three, four and five. But like Persona 4, three uh you've got this whole thing of the dark hour where uh you know there's this hidden hour between one day and the next and uh during the dark hour shadows appear and only a select few people have the ability to walk around during the dark hour and those people can also use personas which are the only ways you can actually defeat shadows uh so uh they have to so they form this uh, secret school group called c's or specialized extracurricular executionary squad, and you've got to go and fight the shadows at night. And there's this whole other storyline uh, involving uh, basically uh, these people that are sick of living in this world, so they're trying to end the world, and you've got to save it relate. because uh, you, you and your friends have found that reason for living uh, and are like, well, that's not your decision to make. You know, there's lots of people that have a reason to live just because you yourself uh, haven't looked for that reason. That doesn't mean that you have the right to end that for everybody else. Like, and dialogue, I'll stop talking please. about that plot line. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Persona 4 does have a murder mystery, uh, but uh, 
like if you do lose somebody, then that ends the game and you've got to restart. And that's just because you didn't go into the TV world to fight to find the person who went missing and save them. Uh, and then Persona 5 uh, has its own storyline as well, where you're basically uh, this kid who tried to save this woman from being, I'm just going to say, assaulted. Uh, it was a bit more adult than that, but uh, uh, yeah, oh, no. she was, you know, he saved her. Yeah, he saved her from the sleazeball guy, and uh, he got hurt, uh, so he sued. Uh, and there's this big whole plot reveal at the end of the game that I won't spoil, but uh, he, uh, he ends up getting sued and put on probation as a criminal, and he even, used, he even manages to convince the woman uh, not to testify uh, on his behalf and to instead claim that the kid assaulted him. Uh, so that, what? so he's uh, on probation, yeah, and he ends up getting booted to, uh, uh, I forget the name of the city right now, it's a real city in Japan, you know, the 404 area, uh, and uh, he ends up living with this uh, cafe manager uh, who has him sleeping in the basement, uh, and then he meets all of his friends and stuff there, and they find out about the metaverse and they meet this uh this cat who's like i'm not a cat and then uh, in the metaverse named morgana who uh asks them to help them to uh invade these palaces in the metaverse uh which are basically the manifestation of a person's psyche a there's a lot of uh psyche and psychological stuff in these games uh and uh it's like, oh yeah, I need your help to, uh, I need your help to traverse the metaverse and and these palaces so we can steal the treasure. And at first they're like, no, we don't want to do it. But then they find out that their teacher uh, is, uh, again, it's kind of an adult topic, uh, asserting his dominance over the girls and also being physically abusive towards the boys. Uh, and they're like, well, we got to stop him. Uh, and the only way to do that is to make him confess his crimes by stealing the treasure in the palace so that it makes him have a change of heart so that he'll confess his crimes. Uh, and then they wind up having to do that again and again and again. I think I just had a headache listening to all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my eyes glossed over, came back, and I'm like, wait, <laughs> this is all a game? <laughs> that sounds like a fucking yep, game Yep, it's a game series. I actually looked up, you said yeah. Japan 404 area. I tried to look it up and I was like, I don't have the brain cells for this right now. <laughs> oh no, it said something ju uh, Jutsu? Ni Nigata Nagaoka? Shinjuku! Or, I think it's Shinjuku? No, oh shoot. That's gonna bother me now. Just, just Google it. I understand. I am. Where does Persona 5 take place? Uh, oh, okay, it is Tokyo. I was thinking Tokyo, but I was like, no, I don't think it was Tokyo. But yeah, it's Tokyo. I'm gonna have to put a massive spoiler warning yeah. before you went on your on your rant. And I know there's gonna be somebody <laughs> in the comments that's gonna be correcting you, like, it's Tokyo! <laughs> <laughs> well, now that person gets to be satisfied in saying that they got to say it first before I cor before we corrected me. Um, but it's, I always find it hysterical whenever I'm talking about Miraculous. I always get sidetracked on a tangent or something like better. But uh, you, you just know the story is going to be about Hawk Moth akumatizes these people and you're going to have to go stop them. But from what I gather, you, you, you get to wear, you as the hero, you get to wear different costumes. So there's that. Yeah, as well. Yeah, certainly. Also, uh, one thing that I was really excited about, uh, Game Mill posted on Twitter that you can actually choose to play as Ladybug or Cat Noir. And girl, you know I'm going to be playing as Cat Noir as much as possible. Oh my god. Uh, it, I just like the fact that, you, you, I remember you tagged me in this. Oh my god, that thing where they were like, vote for who you want to play more or something. <laughs> and Cat Noir dominated the list. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, that that was beautiful to see. And then 
Oh my goodness. Oh, I just realized I haven't posted that video yet. I took a video last night at the stores, like a minute long. Uh, I saw, I found these dolls of Adrian and Cat Noir, and uh, whoever, the, the, and I guess, because these are mass produced dolls and stuff, but they did him so dirty. <laughs> the Adrian doll has like, green in the scalera so like it's a green outline it's like the, like the, they were originally supposed to be green and then they just painted white on them oh. and then the cat noir doll has his eyes going two different directions ah uh, no well i the the miraculous <laughs> dolls are all cursed i once saw a ladybug doll in one of the stores i went into i can't remember if i won't posted a picture on twitter or not but that shit was cursed ladybug looked like she, she she got dragged through the mud her hair looked like a two dollar <laughs> amazon wig like no they did sis dirty although i do kind of want to get a uh, lady noir doll just so that i can customize her into kitty noir <laughs> yeah I, I i have yet to see an oc where the creator is is vehemently in love with her like you like i know there are some people who have ocs and they're like mine but 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 you would commit war crimes on, on Kitty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not just her. I've got other OCs. Uh, Hana, Renee, uh, Nadeshiko, Seiru a little bit too. But like especially Hana and Renee. And I think the reason why um, Kitty is so beloved is 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 how of of the two twins in your AU, she got all the brain cells and she's just protecting Adrian. He's just a dumb himbo and we love him. And he finally has someone who protect him from everyone's bullshit. Oh yeah, I'm imagining that uh, uh, whenever they're, they find out that their father is uh, at Hawk Moth, Shadow Moth, Monarch, whatever you want to call him, uh, yeah, she is just going to be like, no, I will protect Adrian. It's like, you are not going to hurt him uh physically or emotionally he's like i know you're and there's no way i'm all, letting you know he's pat noir but no well, like she'll find out he's hawk moth and she won't tell adrian just to protect him she was like yeah i know my dad was a dick so him being hawk moth isn't isn't a surprise but i can't let my brother find out he's not gonna take it very well <laughs> oh the spoilers the stuff i have planned can't wait but uh but yeah, the, the thing with uh, me and my favorite OCs is that the more that I love an OC, the more I hurt them. I understand. Oh my god. <laughs> that, I don't, that's such a sadistic thing. It's like, we like them, but we want them to suffer. And it's like, am, am I okay? Am I the bad guy? Mm -hmm. because well, uh, there's this, there was a post that I uh, found on Tumblr way, way back. Uh, and I even reblogged it and added some uh, very old drawings that are honestly kind of embarrassing to look at because they're really bad. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, the post was, characters are like geodes. In order to see what they're made of, you have to break them. Yeah. And then I drew a picture of myself with the little stars in my eyes, like this super evil look. And Renee chans like, or no, Hana chans like, she's got that look in her eyes. And then everyone's like, run up! <laughs> That's adorable. Oh my god. Of, of, of my two main characters, I, I, I tweeted about this. And when, when I wrote, when I sat down and I wrote everything I've put them through, I legitimately felt like a monster. I'm like, I'm an evil god or something. But it, it gives them more character. It makes them more memorable. That's why we like characters who suffer. That's why we like Cat Noir. Because he's been through so much. And Marinette hasn't been through as much. And I guess that's why she falls flat and people don't like her. And the only thing she's been through was her revealing Master Fool's shit. But then again, that's more of Master Fool's suffering. But the show kind of said, but no, look at how sad she is from all of this. I mean, I do feel like they're doing a better job of it. Like season five so far has been amazing. Yeah, I and no spoilers. I will admit, no spoilers. not. <laughs> yeah, but I will admit that I'm not as. Uh, 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 upset about season four as you've been i actually liked season four and i i actually did feel for marinette uh I, but that I might also be due to the start. fact that i also give hana yeah then i might also be due to the fact that uh, in my card capture sakura fan fiction hana also kind of has that uh 
that responsibility that she never asked for and she and that winds up bringing her a lot of pain so she has to deal with all that and it's like she never asked for this i i can give you that i feel like the reason um there's another youtuber i really like that says season four is perfection and i'm like did we watch the same season but i try to put my biases aside and look at it objectively like okay from the show standpoint they did their best i just feel like they did adrian dirty so much that it clouded my judgment a little too much because they did him they dirty. did a, they did a pretty good job but i do have to say there are some episodes that i feel like they could have just gotten rid of or done completely differently like uh dear's family for example i feel like uh that was kind of an unnecessary needed. episode yeah. And also yeah. the Chloe and... Like, the only thing... No, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing that really happens that episode that's really important is the fact that Shadow Moth figures out how to break the uh, the lucky, the magic charms, but he could have done that any other episode. And Chilin was also a completely useless episode. <laughs> like, the only reason to watch that is to find... is to learn the backstory of Chilin and Marinette's mother getting akumatized. It was a complete disaster. Also, Chloe... I, I can't believe oh. Zoe got a two-parter. That's the thing. And, episode, and Adrian only got, like, one episode. They did a better job of fleshing out the um, side characters and everything. Al Alia Shun the season four but then again they really wanted to give marinette more screen time and then the episodes she got like again gabriel aggressed why why did we spend 10 minutes trying to come up with a reason why marinette needed to be there like ugh. Mm -hmm. i mean at the very least though i do at least i don't at least disagree with her reason for being there because it wasn't i have to stop chloe from showing a from showing gabriel this embarrassing video it's i have to stop chloe from doing this thing that will ruin adrian's life and it's like that <gasps> oh, yeah, i true, will allow true, 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 true. i actually forgot that <laughs> again i was yeah. so peeved that they spent so much time focusing on not adrian in the episode title gabriel aggressed like but yeah, mm -hmm. she was more focused on don't ruin Adrian's life and it kind of showed Chloe. Again, you could cons consider the Chloe character assassination where they just showed how Chloe is willing to fuck over everyone and everything so long as it inconveniences her. Because Chloe thinks if Adrian gets locked up, I'll still get to see him. So he only needs me, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Before, But it's also like, if you really, ca if, if you really cared about Adrian, then you wouldn't do this to him because it's so important to him that he'd be able to leave the house. Yeah. This is something he fought for. Yeah, it sucks. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's this construction <laughs> just started in my background and I'm just, ugh, whatever. We're basically over anyway. I think we've recorded for 30 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, what that's what I ADD will do. An ADD meets ADHD, the worst combination. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the one thing I want to talk about, like with season five, I've only watched one episode, but I plan to watch multiplication and destruction. But a lot of fans are telling me that TVC, this is the episode that will break you. It's so bad. I'm so furious. And I'm like, wait, what? What, what happened? What? What happened? I liked it. I, I I plan to watch it later today, hopefully, if I remember. But I don't see. Well, you saying that you liked it. And with how season, how strong season five started, I'm I'm coming in with an open mind. That's that, that that's the best thing I can say. It's like episode two has some Adrian development. Exactly. Well, uh, I think they said that the Adrian development was in the wrong way. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm worried. About. I, I don't I disagree. Also, episode three, I won't spoil it, but episode three, while it didn't have that much of Adrian and Cat Noir in it. I have to admit that it doesn't need it because that's not where the focus is supposed to be. The focus is supposed to be on Gabriel. And since his story uh, interacts, intertwines with Marinette, she does need to be there as well. And she also has to explain the, the twist that happens because that's something that happened on her end. But it, the episode gives focus where it needs to focus on. 
Well, okay. So and that's like it's a Gabriel the one episode, yeah. and then Marinette is there. But again, if you can write it in a way that makes sense, I will not be a bitch. The only reason why I am one is when the show tries to bend over backwards. But historically speaking, the episodes people don't like are the ones I like. So we'll see. I'm hopeful. <laughs> yeah, the episodes you don't like, I tend to like. <laughs> always always contradicting that's just me i'm cute and quirky <laughs> like that hey that's the point that's one of the beautiful things about being human is that we're all different and we all have different tastes and likes yeah so when the that doesn't mean that out, anybody's wrong when the game comes out and it inevitably sucks ass or it doesn't respect the people who like it and respect the people who don't it's not the end of the world agreed just like those people who are telling me, oh, you're not a real fan for playing Sword and Shield. They can go crawl in a ditch. What? Because what a real fan wouldn't gatekeep the games. <laughs> so it's like you either play I actually had somebody. Die. Yeah. No. Or, oh, if you, or, those, or the opposite. Those people are like, oh, you're not a real fan because you played the Rise of the Sphinx. It's like, no. Shut up. Go crawl in a ditch. What? In that, fact, or go outside no and smell some flowers and find something to be happy about. That makes no sense. What the fuck? Damn. But yeah, yeah that's where we're gonna end weird. this video. Please make sure to go check out Matsu's stuff. Subscribe to her. She's gonna be, I think, live streaming the game? Yes, on Tuesday. Uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, I am gonna have to react to episode 4, so if it's not out the night before, I'm going to bed early the night before. If it's not out the night before in subtitles, I'm gonna have to do that first, but super early in the morning I'm planning to do that, so I'm still planning to live stream super early in the morning. So basically I have to release this video before Monday, or it's become obsolete. <laughs> oh no, treasure. <laughs> Fuck. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. It comes out Tuesday. You should also upload highlights. That would be fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, then I have to go through a 12 hour live stream though to find clips. <laughs> and here I am thinking me doing a 5 hour live stream is like, oh, that's that, that's the maximum. I don't think I can do more than 6. And here you are just clocking in 12 hours like it's nothing. <laughs> oh, when Scarlet and Violet comes out, I'm planning on uh, streaming for 24 hours. Ah, the grind. Could never be me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you for so much. You underestimate my ability. To I don't underestimate you. I've seen your Pokemon live streams, and I'm like, <laughs> the concentration, her hyperfixation is in full action. <laughs> but yeah, let me see. Uh, how many minutes? Thirty. Wow, thirty. Wow. I'm not editing any of this. I'm just. <laughs> wow. Uh, let, let me do my sign off before I pass out. It's so hot. Okay. Thanks for watching so much for clicking to watch. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. And also like and subscribe to Matsu. Thank you for being here. Love you. Your model is so pretty. But yeah. <laughs> and with that being said, this is TVC and Matsu. I still can't say that. And Matsu <laughs> signing out. Have a magical day, everyone. Mwah.